Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, my name is Geraldine and I'm a digital illustrator from the United States. And I also run a small time stationery shop called GeraldineDraws.com where currently, right now, I'm selling die cut stickers, sticker sheets, art prints, and bookmarks. I'm hoping to expand my shop soon with enamel pins and that's actually the topic of today's video. So last week I did a reaction video on my first Kickstarter because as some of you may know I launched a Kickstarter to make fast food enamel pins and it was a series of five and we got to unlock and um, we're going to be making four out of the five pins. So I'm really happy about that and I made a reaction video last week as to um, how I felt throughout the whole process and this week I wanted to make kind of like a continuation video about the Kickstarter but more onto details as to how I actually did my research, the steps that I took to create the Kickstarter before it went live. So I haven't gotten the money from Kickstarter yet and I haven't put the order through to make the enamel pin so I can't really explain to you um, that side of things but I will make a video once um, that event does happen but yeah we're going to be focusing today on just how I made it how I planned out how much money I need for my initial goal and my stretch goals and uh, kind of a step-by-step -step thing so if you're interested please continue watching and hopefully I will be specific enough um, to be able to um, answer any questions you might have First thing is, before you even reach out to a manufacturer for enamel pins, you want to design your pins. Because most, all or most of the manufacturers that you're going to come across will ask you for the artwork because they need to see how many colors it's going to be, how intricate your design or your pattern is going to be, and that's how they can give you an accurate estimate as to how much you're going to be paying for uh, these pins. So you want to make your enamel pin design. A lot of manufacturers are okay with accepting PNG or PDF files. I know that it's much better to send them the Adobe Illustrator or AI files because that way your artwork is vectorized and what vector vectors are are their artwork or text without pixels. So essentially you can scale them down or zoom in as much as you want without sacrificing the quality of the image or the text. So that's why those are so um, so good because they can't distort your, your design for some reason. Maybe you gave them a small file dimension. With an AI file, the items are vectorized so they can resize it as big as they want to. But like I said, I know not everyone has the software. I don't have the Adobe Illustrator software, so um, they are generally okay with accepting PNG and PDF files. I would just suggest that you make the pin dimension um, at least two or three times larger than what you plan it to be. So for example, I'm going to be making these fast food enamel pins one and a half inches. So I enlarged it to like three or four inches in dimensions on my um, Photoshop file. So that's how I saved it um, in a PNG and a PDF format as well. I gave them both the files just to give them an option. I don't really know if it matters, but yes. So that's uh, one of my recommendations. Um, you want to make sure that the lines are really clean and the, the lines are as thick as you want it to be. I would definitely encourage you to do all that work yourself and not expect the manufacturer to edit your file for you and try to make it look better because they might make a mistake, they might make it a lot worse. So at least um, the editing will be in your... Um, will be your responsibility so you know what you did. So once you have that artwork ready, um, now's the time to start looking for enamel pin manufacturers. And there are 
two ways you can go about this. You can either go through um, the direct route or the middleman route. So the first one, the direct route, artists usually go on Alibaba.com and search out enamel pin manufacturers because all or most of the enamel pin factories are based in China um, because I believe it's illegal to actually create them here uh, due to the chemicals and all of that stuff but I'm not gonna go into that most of them are based in China so you can look for custom enamel pins or custom hard enamel pins on alibaba.com and you can find a list of different enamel pin manufacturers and talk to them directly and ask them for a quotation. The second method is the more expensive one. Um, this is the middleman route and the middleman can be residing in the United States, the UK, Canada, Australia, wherever and you usually go through them and tell them what design you want, how much, um, how many pins you want, the size and all of the specifications that you want and they will usually turn your um, your work, your design into an AI file, something that is suitable for them and they will forward it to their designated um, enamel pin manufacturer which is usually based in China so they have a designated um, manufacturer that they trust and they use for everyone's work. Um, so essentially you're paying for both the factory in China to create your enamel pin, but you're also paying the middleman for their work and for their correspondence to that factory. So that would be the more expensive way. I chose the first the first uh, method, which is direct, I talked to like five, six different enamel pin manufacturers to get a quote and see how their prices varied. Some important things that you want to include in your email when you're messaging these manufacturers, if you choose this route, would be something like, number one, what is your MOQ? MOQ is minimum order quantity, so usually, you know, Enamel pin manufacturers are not just going to create two or even ten enamel pins of a certain design for you, otherwise it's going to be really expensive and I don't think a lot of them, they will just flat out say no. Um, so you need to know what the minimum order quantity is. There are some manufacturers that will allow 25 or 50, which is quite low and there's not a lot of manufacturers that actually do that. Most of them will say 100 which is pretty much the response that I got from all of the manufacturers that I spoke to. They said 100 is the minimum order requirement. Um, the second question that you want to ask them, or you may want to ask them, is do you offer a 50-50 payment? So I know some people choose to pay 100% upfront, which is totally fine, and if you're okay with that, then all is well. But a benefit to paying 50-50 is you're paying half up front, but you're not going to be paying them the half, uh, the other half until you see the, the design, the picture of the enamel pin, and until you're completely satisfied. So that kind of gives the manufacturer the incentive or that forces them to really um, cater to your needs and make sure that everything is looking good so that you are satisfied and you give them the rest of the payment later on. So because there's a lot of um, manufacturers apparently from what I hear, uh, a lot of things go wrong and they will not redo it for free and you have to just pay all over again for a new batch to be remade which is a nightmare I imagine. Um, so that's an important question that you could ask them as well. Third question would be if you're into um, different kind of clutches. There's rubber clutches, metal clutches, uh, I think butterfly clutches, and there's so many different colors to the rubber clutches. So if you're someone who is, uh, would rather get a specific color, then you can also ask them that if you're particular on that. Number four, um, a question that I ask the manufacturers is if they can provide me a picture of the actual enamel pin once they've started making it. 
So you have to be pretty clear with this and you might have to reiterate it um, again to the manufacturer because some of them are confused and they think that you're asking for a digital proof and it's not a digital proof. I do expect one and I believe that should be a standard for all enamel pin manufacturers but what I want is once they've started actually making my physical product, I want them to take a picture of it so I can see how the enamel pin colors look like, how the metal looks like, um, if there are any weird defects or anything going on, I can point it out to them. And hopefully they would be taking this picture at the initial start of uh, production and not when they've already made the entire 100 or 200 batch of pins and also I can use that picture to give an update to my um, Kickstarter backers when it's over and while we are all kind of in that waiting period after that After I've asked all my questions in the same email I will also give them details of my enamel pin of course so you want to include information like obviously have the file attached because they will need to see it to be able to give you a um, accurate quote. You want to give them the dimensions, so one inch, one and a half inch. My pin was one and a half inch. Um, what kind of plating you want. For me, I said gold plating. How many posts in the back you want. Now this can vary. Usually I think one inch pins are only one post, but with one and a half you can have two, or if the size is bigger then you can have more than that. For me, I requested for two posts just because it stays secure and the things don't rotate like with one post. Um, I told them I wanted a logo back stamp, so I want my logo or at least the words Geraldine Draws in the back. I told them I wanted rubber clutch and I specified yellow because I thought it went well with every um, design that I had for this fast food pin Kickstarter. You also want to tell them if there are any special finishes, like if you want glitter on certain areas or transparency or stained glass. For my Kickstarter, um, being that it's my first time making enamel pins as well, I decided to just go the, the plain route, the easiest and the cheapest route, which is just plain enamel colors. Um, no glitter or any special finishes. No cutouts either. So that's another thing. If you have a cutout in your design, that's going to, of course, increase the price because the machine has to be really precise with cutting that specific area out. So you want to let them know if there are any cutouts or not. And you have to make sure that your design is fully filled in if there are no cutouts. For mine, I believe the Popsy Soda had a few and um, the cheeseburger design also had areas where it could have been um, I could have had cutouts but I didn't want to pay extra for that so I just filled it in in white and it still looks nice so um, yeah you want to make sure that your design is all filled in if you don't want to cut out and then once you get your uh, the manufacturer that you want to use or you think you want to use and you get the amount, then it would also be helpful if you asked them how much the shipping would cost because oftentimes, you know, when they give you the price, it's oh, so nice. But then, you know, they tell you that the shipping costs like 40 or even $90 to ship to here. And yeah, it's no longer so nice. So I always make sure that I ask them, you know, how much would um, the total price including shipping, uh, standard shipping, um, to zip code so and so. So I want to see the full price. That way you can really make a good, solid, accurate Kickstarter goal um, knowing that the shipping um, of the enamel pins was already covered. Okay, so once you have your enamel pin manufacturer and you know how much you need to save for um, each and every pin, now it's time to actually make the Kickstarter initial goal and the stretch goals. So I would say planning for that was the most stressful, confusing thing to me. 
um, in this whole Kickstarter process. And I still don't know if I got it right, but I just kind of did what a friend recommended to me. So I'm going to share this same information with you and hopefully it will work out. So I, I'll do an, uh, a video at the very end once I've already fulfilled the enamel pins and I'll tally up like how much I got to raise and how much I actually spent for enamel pins, shipping supplies, and all of that. So we will take this hypothetical example. So say for uh, one type of pin, for 100 pins, it, ta it takes 200 bucks, 200 US dollars, to manufacture it. So um, this we're, we're talking about how to set up your initial goal, by the way. So you have $200 uh, that you need to save up for one design of an enamel pin. And next thing you need to do is you need to think about how much you plan on um, selling this pin for in your Kickstarter. So with your Kickstarter, ten, uh, you know, generally people price it lower than what it would be for retail. So let's say uh, just for a whole number, you decide to make it 10 bucks. So every person that pledges for this Kickstarter will be pledging for at least 10 bucks worth of a pin. Um, so hypothetically, for example, if every person only pledged for one pin, if you're trying to raise one pin, let's say, how many people will you need to equal out the money um, that it takes to make all of these pins, which is 200. So 200 divided by 10 bucks means you need 20 people, at least 20 people, to back this Kickstarter up before you can break even for the enamel pins. So that in mind, we're gonna take that aside and now we're gonna talk about shipping. So this was also another really confusing part because shipping is always a mystery to me. But anyway, with Kickstarter, it's an international um, like crowdfunding uh, platform, so you never know where your backers are going to come from. There's no way to tell uh, who is going to back your project up. They could be from like Norway, or they can be from Australia, or they can be like your next door neighbor. So you have to take the average of the shipping cost all over the world just to make sure that you know you're not charging too much but at the same time you're not gonna pay too much out of your own pocket for people shipping so what I did I took the average of four places so United States is about 350 and shipping to Canada is about 11 um, Europe UK so I uh, chose UK so that would be 13 bucks and then Asia slash Australia would be like 17 bucks. So the average of that, so I took 350, 11, 13, and 17. And I will correct it over here if I did my math wrong, but the average of the four of those is about $11. So that would be how much you need to charge for shipping for your, your hypothetical 20 backers. So now you're going to multiply the 20 backers times the average shipping, which is 11, which we get to $220 for shipping. So $220, you're gonna add that on to the $200 price um, that it, it takes to create the enamel pins, so that you're now at 420. It's hard for me to do mental math even though it's just addition but you're at $420 so far just to fund the pins um, and to have money for shipping for these 20 backers um, and now you have to think about the extra shipping supplies that you might need um, I for one don't have the right shipping supplies that I need for my enamel pins because I only really sold flat items, so I just used regular letter envelopes to mail mine and just put first class stamps. But now I'm going to need some bubble mailers, bubble wrap. 
I will need some cellophane bags for my stickers as well as the pins, backing cards, so you need to factor that and uh, make an estimate as to how much it would cost you to uh, pay for all of that. So that and you have to add the cost of the Kickstarter fees, which is generally 10%. So if you take 10% of 420, that gives you $42. So now you have to tack that on to the price. 420 plus 42, you're at $462 so far with um, as far as your initial goal. And that's not even taking into consideration your um, your shipping supplies. That's how I arrived at my initial goal. I'm going to have this written down in the description box below so you can read it at your leisure in case you could not understand me at all. <laughs> if you think you're going to have a really successful Kickstarter, you might benefit from getting a thermal label printer if you don't have one already. Um, mine, I only have a few backers, so I think I can get away with just using regular paper and my printer to do it. We'll see how it is if my hand falls off and whatever. <laughs> but that's how you arrive at your initial goal. After that though, you don't have to set the increment at the same level. So if, it, if you had a $500 initial goal, you don't have to do um, stretch goals at $500 as well because the shipping supplies are going to be decreasing since you generally buy in bulk and you don't need like 600 bucks for shipping supplies. So for me, my initial goal was 400 and then my stretch goals I set in an increment of 300 because I still wanted, you know, that still covered the cost of making the other pins and a little extra for um, shipping and uh, shipping supplies as well as the Kickstarter fee. So my first one, the cheeseburger pin unlocked at $400 and then I would have my fries unlocked at 700, the next one at 1000, the next one at 1300, and so forth. So that's essentially how I arrived to um, the money and the logistics part of the Kickstarter. The next tedious thing would be to set up your story. So you want to, you know, make a proper introduction of yourself, who you are as an artist, and what you've done before and introduce them your pin. You want to do a breakdown of um, you know, what unlocks when at what dollar amount and if there are any freebies that you want to throw on. For me, I threw in the bookmarks and freebie um, vinyl sticker with every pin pledge. So some people choose to do extra things like canvas pouches, shaker charms, acrylic charms, um, sticker sheets, etc. So you can do whatever you choose to do as long as it's not overwhelming for you. So you set up your story and make it look all nice and neat. And you can use my uh, Kickstarter as an example. I will set a link down below. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. Then just hype it up until the launch date. So I know I talked a lot and it was a really long video, but hopefully you found uh, something about this video to be helpful. Uh, if you've never made a Kickstarter, it can be extremely confusing and overwhelming because no one really talks about this stuff and gives you any information as to how to do what and uh, what steps to take next. So hopefully uh, sharing my experience with you helped a bit. And unfortunately, we didn't fund everything. Like I said, I still have one pin that I want to make. So I actually have it up for pre-orders right now. Um, it's in my shop and I will have the link below, of course, if you're interested in looking. But the pre-order uh, session is going to be open until Monday, September 7th at around 3 p.m. EST. So uh, it definitely would be nice if you could do a pre-order and help us. But uh, that'll, that'll ensure that you get the best of the batch. And of course, there's a free vinyl sticker that comes with the uh, chicken nugget pin pre-order. Anyway, that's enough rambling for today. Um, thank you so much for watching my video. If you liked it and found it helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. 
leave any comments below if uh, you um, have any questions or if there's a method that you use that you found to be really helpful or even better than what I suggested everyone would benefit from it including me yeah but anyway thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one bye